Alright YouTube, today we're going to play a different build of Death Shadow. This is much closer to a list that Ben Jones and um, I cannot pronounce his name to save my life, but it's Canister on Moto have been playing. Um, ben won a Death Shadow in Europe with Grix's Shadow a couple, a little while ago. So I figured I would run their list through a league. It's much lower on, um, there's only one Serum Visions in the deck, and there's the full four Thought Scours and two Faithless Lootings. Um, it's much closer to Ben's list. Basically, it's just Ben's list that uh, cut... What did it cut? It cut a Mishra's Bobble and then one other card for Colgon's Command. A Snapcaster Mage. Which I like K Command in this deck now that you have six ways to put cards in the graveyard, which is nice. Um let me put some more lights on, hang on before I talk about this some more. Um I did a league with this deck today already, and I went four one with it. Um it was more aggressive and had a little bit better of like a sideboard hate card. These ley lines were really good for me. Um these ley lines were great. Very good. Um, but I didn't feel like my deck was very as consistent with these without the with these serum visions in there. Without the serum visions. So we're just gonna give it a whirl. Uh, try it out. Competitive modern league. Let's jump into it. See what I think about this. Yeah, I was pretty happy with this deck. Basically pretty happy with any Death Shadow deck. I think I think the you know, Street Wraith, Thought Seas, Death Shadow is basically better than what most modern decks are doing just from there. So it's not really it's a pretty good place to start out. I've thought about it. We well, guess we can do all kinds of new stuff in Legacy now. Now there's no death right challenge. There's probably gonna be more swords to plowshares though, right? So like that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. I'm gonna go brew. Well, I guess my coffee's still brewing. I don't know if I'm going to be streaming tomorrow or not. Probably not. It's the 4th of July and my dog's pretty sick again, which is so sad. He picked up a skin infection in the lake. In the lake that we were swimming at this weekend. So he is uncomfortable. But I don't know if I'll be streaming this week. And then my brother's here this weekend. So I might be taking the rest of the week off. So I wanted to get at least one more in. Oh, there we go. Match finally popped. It's a long time for a modern match to take. I finished up my 100 match challenge that I was doing with my shatter deck that I liked. Um, this hand's alright. We're going to keep it. Definitely could be better. I'm gonna lead on the Blood Crypt, just in case I have to like fetch a Steam Vents next turn in order to double bolt for some reason. Okay, so playing as Blue Moon, so we're gonna take this Blood Moon. These bolts are pretty bad, though. If I can get a Gurmag Angler in play, I should be fine. All right, we're just going to start chucking these at my opponent because I need to make Gurmag Angler castable. All 
My opponent appears to be F6, which is good for the home team. I'm going to fire off one more, get a steam vent. This is this is the hard mode here. Oh, that makes me feel silly. Cast this. Where's the Tron? I think I'm gonna play Tron either later or um or after uh, Tron later tonight. If I play a second league, I'll probably play Tron tonight, but I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to a little tired. Uh, I probably want Thought Scour. I don't really need... So if I draw a Snapcaster, maybe I need to draw Lance. We're going to get rid of this Lightning Bolt. And probably the Inquisition at this point. don't know what that means, Johnny. Bolt me. You got it. So I know my opponent's four cards. And they suck. Because they're four lands. Pretty unfortunate draw for my opponent. They just drew three spells. Alright, well that isn't exactly lethal, I guess. I guess I should have left a snap. I miscounted. Good, my life total. My opponent's dead next turn, but... I'm going to bolt now so that I can flash the bolt back on my opponent's turn. Do I need to? <laughs> How are you doing tonight, Teddy? Did you find, watch the rest of uh, Top Deck stream? I thought Jake had some pretty good modern talk in the beginning. Just had a good, good little chat about it. So against this Blue Moon deck, I'm going to assume this is what we want. I don't know if right here is very good. Like if they have electrolyzed, they're gonna board it out. I have a bunch of cards that I know I don't want. I don't really want these dismembers. Uh, I don't really want fatal push. And I can shave on street race. So that's a pretty easy five for five sub. I don't think Ben posted a Ben posted a side. So I got this list from uh, Ben Jones. Uh, ben Jones won a Grand Prix in Europe in March with Death Shadow. I've been chatting with him a little bit. This is what he played. This is what he and uh, Canister played at GP Barcelona. Each of them did all right. I think I think they went 10-5 and 11-4. But he's got a cyborg guide. But let me see if he's got. I want to sideboard the way that he does it because he built the deck. Tron and Ironworks, UW Jeskai, Boggles. No, he doesn't have anything about these Blue Moon decks here. So we're going to kind of wing it. I'm going to leave my Battle Rages in, I think. Because he just can't. I don't, like, there's no. Like, the Blue Moon decks tend to be pretty soft to Battle Rage. Just because there's they don't they don't actually kill Death Shadow very well. I still have a lot of good cards to bring in. Like I, I like this card except for Blood Moon. Give, I'll give it a whirl there, Johnny. We'll go with you. The problem is you, you just can't you can't beat Battle Rage, right? You don't have ways like I find these blue moon decks are pretty besides roasts are pretty poor at killing the creatures that I present. If I can it's a pretty much a free roll, besides cryptic command. Um I'm gonna keep this hand and hopefully hit a second land drop. I'm gonna get my coffee too.
Um, what's my opponent's name? It's Corn Ten. Yeah, but they're gonna snare my. I, I'm much happier they snare my Battle Rage than my Pyromancer or my Snapcaster, right? All right, so that's a lot of reach. So this pyromancer is never gonna live. I kind of just want to get rid of this harvest pyre because this harvest pyre is probably the only thing that's actually gonna kill my Gurmag angler. It's not a two for one. Alternatively, I should just cast, take the negate now, and take the harvest pyre next turn. So that's what we're gonna do. Even though the harvest pyre is the prize, we get to take the negate with us. Oh yeah. Six and two in the challenge is very good. That's a really good draw. Because now if my opponent has something like they drew in a remand, then I can deal with it. That's aggressive. Alright, dude. This is a I think this is a very poor play from him. Yeah, so we're just gonna take these harvest this harvest party. These cryptic commands aren't gonna do anything the rest of the game, because like they're just going to trade so poorly on mana. Like, even if my opponent hits their land drops, they're going to lose. Because they're going to end up trading 4 mana for 1 mana. We have to get to the Gurmag Angler. But, like, you know, that's probably going to happen. It's like, it's whoever gets the Gurmag Like, if this Gurmag Angler gets down underneath these Cryptic Commands, the game's over. If my opponent gets the Cryptic Command and I don't have Angler, then I might be in a lot of trouble. That's all. I wonder what that means. It probably means they have Electrolyze. Alright, Thoughtseize isn't bad. That's something to do. Snapcaster Mage. Target Lightning Bolt. So I'm going to 10, then going to 8, then going to 6. Oh, no, we're not going to stub my Thoughtseize. We are going to stub that, though. Get to another card in our graveyard for Gurmag Angler as well. And now that my opponent, now that I did stub one of these, I have to get rid of this. Yeah, I agree. It kind of sucks. Now I'm likely to lose my Gurmag Angler to like this Snapcaster plus Bolt, but we have another Gurmag Angler. If I draw a fetch land, I can play Angler with Stubborn. Oh. My mic just fell, so sorry if that's loud. Bolt me. Okay. So we're down to six. They put one card on top. That's tough. Now I'm going to flash the Snapcaster Mage in to just try to trade with their Snapcaster Mage. No, I'm in a lot of trouble, I think. Hopefully this stabilizes the board. The problem is if I draw a fetch land, I likely can't... Um... I likely can't fetch red for it, because I'll probably need need blue mana to defend my Gurmag Angler. And even though my opponent has seen quite a few lightning bolts, I guess only two. They bounced my land.
So what's our last card? Is our last? Do they really keep a lightning bolt? I mean, we're gonna find out, right? Now, I mean, if they have a lightning bolt on top or another cryptic command, then I'm in trouble. But if we get to untap here, I'm probably still in a lot of trouble because I don't have a way to deal with this Snapcaster Mage. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. And we just didn't get our... We, we didn't get Gurma Angler down underneath the cryptic command, which is what we needed here. Oh, yeah, they did. Well, no, they didn't. I took... Didn't I take a lightning bolt? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. That one, over, that one went over my head. Uh, okay. I don't really think I want to change anything. The only card that I that I want maybe is like this, but I could cut Street Wraith for it, but that's it. Yeah, just zoned out for a second. We're going to go like this. We're just going to keep it the same way. It's like if we hit a spell that gets Gurmag Angler down, then we win that game going away. I just didn't I just didn't quite, just couldn't get the Angler there, which was unfortunate. That was kind of very good. Going to lead off on this. Uh, probably just going to lead off on Swamp. There's no need to get super aggressive yet. We don't have a shadow or an angler. Okay, so we're just gonna take this opt. And we're gonna get rid of that get rid of that Karanos after we play our young pyromancer. That makes sense. Alright, so now I'm going to fetch. There's no need to save myself one damage. I'm just going to continue to fill my graveyard. Excuse me. Alright, now we're good. That's a great draw, too. This pyromancer should this pyromancer should run this game over here. Uh, that's when you know you're in a tough way. When you're remanding a spell against young pyromancer, yeah. Yeah, that's when you know life's life's on hard mode right there. Got him. Well, yeah, looting's velocity, and it's actually you actually it's actually card disadvantage. You go down a card when you cast it. I have cut my lootings after sideboard um, a decent amount because um, I like cutting my because like against sideboard your deck's much better. Um, we're gonna keep the tanks. We have a lightning. Well, my opponent mulligans. Now we're still going to keep the same. We have lands and spells. We can get a Death Shadow on two. If we need to be linear, we can bolt ourselves. Happy pre-freedom day. Thank you, Archmage. I appreciate that. Uh, Steam Vents go. Put a card on the bottom. What are we playing against? I think we're just going to see our visions. I would assume that we're playing against either Blue, White, Red, or Storm. Oh, it's my work shirt. I still have my work shirt on from today. I want both of these cards. I'm going to cycle my Street Wraith on two to draw both of them. I might want to play the Angler. I think I'm actually going to run out Gurmag Angler on two. Yeah, because... The angler doesn't get killed by a lightning bolt. So let's cycle. 
then I can actually just take it easy here with my life total because this is going to be enough pressure to win the game. Get rid of this, 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 this. We have a Snapcaster. Snap Serum or Snap Stub is likely going to be our best play. You can say through this card, land power so don't make a card. Oh, it's card. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not necessarily card advantage because like you do technically go down. That's card quality, right? So are we just gonna assume that our we're gonna board like our opponent's storm? So we're gonna get a little aggressive. When I play against storm, I like having less removal in my deck after sideboard. So I think I'm gonna assume we're playing storm. I think I can get away with sideboarding like like this. Because Storm oftentimes, if they're on like the Caleb Shear plan, they're going to cut their bears against this deck. So I think we can get away with going down on removal. Because we still have six discard spells to hit the bears with. Yeah, I think that just because so Caleb boards out some gifts in this matchup too. So I, I think I actually think that Storm I actually think that uh Stroke's a trap, to be honest. But I'm gonna keep this. It's weak to a bear, but it's good otherwise. Benny Hills lives in Colorado. <laughs> okay, so I was wrong. We're playing against a rug scape shift deck. Okay. Um, do I want this? I probably don't want that land. I'm just gonna get a steam vents and pass the turn. No, it ended up being we drew another land, which is whatever. Hopefully they go land Farseek. That'd be gas. They exile the search for tomorrow. So now we've got to play Young Pyromancer. Drew two lands, that sucks. Okay. So we're trying to get the pyro in here. We're gonna play two very small death shadows next turn, but they never stay small. Then we can start working this pyromancer. Obstinate Bailoff. This is going to be a tough one to win. I actually don't think this card's good against these Death Shadow decks. I think you're better off just not diluting your deck. Because, like, like if I, if I have a hand on the play, oftentimes this doesn't matter. This thing doesn't matter here. I think your deck would be just be better offset trying to be as redundant and linear as possible. Like I don't know what they cut for this. They probably cut something like ramp pieces, if I had to assume. Reveal attack. Do it. Damn it. Okay, that's actually a pretty good draw if I have another fetch land, which I don't think I do. That sucks. I actually don't have another shock land. Nope. I literally, I thought about that right after I played it. So now I just like dead give away what my hand is. And then it's garbage.
but this is why we play three games. Maelstrom poles. So I kind of just want to stub this to make tokens. I think I'm going to. We're in a tough way here. I need to get something going here. I'm going to bring my dismembers back in after sideboard. So now we're doing something at least. Best draw for me now would be like a Faithless Looting. Scape Shift, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one more land, scape shift's legal, lethal. So we're just going to take the scape shift. And I'm just going to pass here. Hopefully I find a lightning bolt to finish this bail off off so I can attack with my elementals. I probably have to start attacking next turn. Okay, so there's the land they needed, but at least they can't damnation me. I have no idea how to sideboard correctly against this deck. All right, well, that's a pretty good draw. They have Damnation Cryptic Command in their hand. All right, Snapcaster is pretty good. I'm going to just see what my opponent's drawing. They're drawing an obstinate bailoff. Nice. So hopefully one, two, can they tap? No, they're not gonna tap out of cryptic command. I do think I'm gonna start serving in with these elementals though. Because I'm likely to just start casting my snapcaster mages to just start cycling into ways to deal with this damnation. I'm pretty in trouble anyways, here. They're just going to cycle the crypt command. Tap, draw. Alright. Are they trying to, like, attack me? That seems odd. This whole play seems odd here. Because now I can, like, snap the damnation. I can actually just eat this. I don't even think I want to. Also, I can make two tokens to eat this with Snapcaster Mage, but if my opponent goes land damnation, then I'm in trouble, so I'm not going to do that. We're just going to take one more shot from this thing. We're just going to play another Bayloth. Yep. So the last card's damnation. Make a bunch of tokens. What's going on, Snapcaster Mage? Okay. Snapcaster Mage is tweaking out. Okay, so I can Thought Seize the Damnation, and then Faithless Looting, probably? I guess I should start off with a Looting. Oh shoot, I tapped like an asshole. Oh, that was so bad. Just zoned out. 
Yes, he's super punished for this. Oh, nice. All right, let's serve in with our 10 guys here. It's just a legacy ban. Yeah, that was a very poor tap from me. So they put steam vents in the graveyard. So now they're just like digging for scape shifts. What are they doing? They're digging, they're gonna cryptic me. Okay, I got it. So they're gonna snap scape shift, that's gas. Alright, I'm not gonna make them do it all out here. I'm gonna assume that they have it. Snap scape shift. All right, so now, because we're playing against scape shift and all this stuff, we're going to bring in our strokes, our stroke. I'm going to board out my bolts, board in my dismembers, and then we're probably just going to keep it like this. Yeah, and we're going to send it back. Yeah, stroke is good. What are you going to, you're going to play, um, whatever it is. Uh, we gotta ship this. We don't have a threat. His hand's a little better. Gives us a redraw. I don't really want random discard against the Obstinate Bayloth deck. Wow, they moved a four. So we actually want this because it just enables Delve and Death Shadow. So even though like cycling it, putting it on the bottom is the exact same as cycling it. Oh, give me one second. Okay, so cycle, cycle, dot scour is fine. So that's probably we're probably gonna get steam vents with dot scour. So we don't really have any of that many red cards in the in the deck left, right? So I can just get blood crypt if I want, because I hate steam vents. But it's probably right to get steam vents here, because I can draw faithless Loon. Like, faithless Loon will be like a very good play for me next turn. Okay, so there's nasty. So we're getting nasty. Second nasty, not great. <clears throat> More blue spells than black and red. Black and red. Yeah, so the big thing was like I wanted to be able to cast um whatever it is. I actively, re I really wanted to cast Faith Sleeping Pedro. So I'm just going to Battle Rage over this thing. We're going to get it. We're going to, like, get the clock going here. Yeah, I'm just going to battle. Like, I'm just going to be mana efficient. It fuels my second Gurmag Angler. And I can get over for 10 to make it so my opponent can't really get too aggressive with their life total or they're just going to die. So now my opponent can choose to sack it or not, which I don't actually don't care. If they choose to sack it or soak up a damage, it's fine by me. Whoa. Whoa. That's tough. That Jace is going to be tough. There's a reason to leave lightning bolts in. Yeah, I mean this is this is going to be this is going to be tough to beat up on. The big question is are we are we going at Jace or are we going at our opponent? Oh, I'm definitely just smoking this thing with a dismember at the end of the turn. It's going to let me get another Gurmag Angler in play, get another token.
Um, probably want watery grave now. We're getting Steve out of there. This means like with my mana base, I can now if I draw like if I draw, um, I can play Gurmag Angler next turn, which is good. So I'm going to send this adjacent, this and my opponent. I don't know if this is going to work out. But let's get in here and attack first. I would be willing to bet that my Gurmag Angler is about to run into a, um, a remand here. So let's see what my opponent's top card is. Forest. And we're going to pay full retail here because we want. Um, I probably should have left the dismember there to snap it back. Yeah. Now we get remanded. So I drew Forest, which means I can cast Bayloth now. So I probably should have left my dismember in there. I'm, just, I'm not playing very well because now we're going to get Bayloth. Yep. And now this is going to get a little harder for the home team. Search. All right, that was a pretty fortunate draw. So I'm definitely casting this. So let's see what they've got. Search. One, two, three. Oh, all right. Get our boy in here. Well, I mean, if he doesn't have remand, then he's then he's like then he's dead. So I ditch Valakit, and I get a random draw. So they have to chop this shadow. So we're just we're shipping him with everything. We just what are we doing here? Oh man, they hit a bring the light off of that one draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. You want to bring the beats. Give me one second. Hello? What's up? In Crystal City? Why? Okay, well, be careful, okay? All right, I love you. Bye. Oh, they got me here? Yeah. That's tough. That is tough. But what are you going to do? I think that... I'd have to look. Let me see if I should... Let me see if I look at my previous hand. Because there's an argument that maybe I should have... Like, I should not have lost that game. So I'm going to assume that there was some something going on in that game that was my fault. Like I, I, t I probably tossed that game. Like a Death Shadow deck that keeps seven is not supposed to lose when you have like thought disruption, discard spells and snapcast mage should not lose to a game um should not lose to a deck like that. So that was that was, I just tossed that more than likely. Um I think I'm gonna ship this hand. This is basically a mulligan with no creature. Sounds okay. So we're definitely just gonna thought seize my opponent. So it would have yes, it would have prevented the turn of events, Teddy, because they would have been one card below theoretically. But like Emiria. Oh, so we're playing against like a, a Soul Sisters deck. It's still it's probably I, I it's more likely right to cast the angler. 
I feel like. Wow, what an odd turn of events this is. Tap. Forecast. So I'm just going to take the Squadron Hawk. I don't have any idea what's going on here. This is likely not going to be good. Yes. This is very good. So we're likely ditching one of these Snapcaster Mages. Probably the Battle Rage. Like, probably these two, depending on what these two cards are. Hoping these two cards are good. That's also right there, Archmage. I'd have to look back at it, Teddy, because, like, did he did he have the Bailoff in play when I cast the Angler, or was that afterwards? So I think we're definitely getting rid of this, and we're likely getting rid of this as well. Because we're going to try to ride Snapcaster Mage to victory here, which I don't exactly know how that's going to work out, but... We're just going to get this tapped. No, actually, I'm going to get it untapped. I should have gotten a Steam Vents. This deck has more red in it than I'm used to. So we're just going to snap Thoughtseize, take the Ranger Vios. That was a turn for you, Shadow, and they drew a Forest. Yeah, then I likely, I likely messed up. There, just like, you know, was not playing above the rim. I have come quite fond of this card over the last month or so. It is all around great. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the Ranger. Hopefully we get to stub this day of judgment. What does this thing even do? Reveal. Return target creature card with one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So for six mana, you just reanimate every turn. Reanimate a one drop. Another flagstones. It's a legend. All right, there we go. So let's get in here. We're going to snap stub the Day of Judgment, and then we're going to hope this game is over. So I wonder if I'm supposed to bring in Graveyard Hate against this deck. Like, my gut tells me that's a bad idea, but I don't know. Deck does not have any sweepers. I took this 75 from Ben and it just decided to run it through. My opponent's actually dead on the board, dead next turn. So I think I'm actually going to flashback my looting because if I hit a discard spell or another stubborn denial, it's just like it's that good. And I also have the time to do it. And this gives me more looks than just firing off this Thought Scour. And we're just going to go like this. Should have done this pre-combat for this reason. I think we're going to hold that. We, we've, we've got our opponent. I guess my opponent could play a Chump Blocker. I guess I don't really know what to respect out of my opponent's, excuse me, out of my opponent's deck. Yeah. Because now they can get... I was worried about, like, after seeing this Day of Judgment, I wanted to play around a second Wrath, but now I'm punished. Because my opponent, I would have made my opponent at least abyss away the Ranger plus whatever he got and took four. Sarah Ascendant. Okay. 
and Martyr of Sands. So my opponent's going to block this no matter what. I should just kill this thing. And then I'm probably just not even going to mess around and play my other Death Shadow. I'm just going to attack with both. Because if they want to go like chump trade, I'm alright with that. Whoa. Oh, okay. Alright. Oh, they're going to bring back... They're going to like play this Martyr, bring back this Terra Ascendant, sack the Martyr. You'd have, you'd have dismembered there? Oh, you're talking about... Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, so there's the field. Here's the Martyr. Raven Inspector. All right. So the last card, they have Proclamation X. So now we're going to dismember this thing. They've got at least Proclamation. I kind of want to just pay all, all four life for it because they're going to gain at least... So they gain three life, go to 11. They pay four life, both Death Shadows are lethal. So we're just going to... We're going to pay four here. Because this makes both shadows lethal. Even if they, unless they gain more than eight life. More than, they have two white cards in their hand. Should dis the clue. Yeah, we're gonna F6 here. So my opponent draws a card. They sack this, they show. They have to show at least two white cards. So they have Martyr Sands. Okay, so they have another Martyr. Right? They reveal two cards. Oh, well that makes it pretty easy. I guess I might as well attack first. I don't think they would. I think they would show me Path to Exile. That was a good draw. It's a pretty good one from the home team. Okay, so I want cards like Grim Lava Mancer and probably more removal. Grim Lava Mancer. Uh, it's likely. Grim Angler is probably not going to be that great because they're going to be able to chump it and I'm going to have to need a Death Shadow in order to let Battle Rage really work well. Probably don't need all these Stubborn Denials. I would assume my opponent's going to bring in a Rest in Peace so I can snap one of those. This K Command is probably not great. Um. And I can probably just shave like one of these. Because I don't want to go too I don't want to go too hard with my life total. Because if my opponent like gets a bunch of 1-1 flyers, they're gonna be difficult to interact with. Like, thinking that's that's what I ought to be doing. So I can't I don't think I can mulligan this hand. It's a little unfortunate that like I, I run more of a risk of not hitting a second land drop, but Martyr never plays rip. Their own graveyard is really important. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna push this thing off a cliff before my opponent gets to activate it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I don't really know a whole lot about what's going on with this deck here. So now we're just going to go double discard spell. Unless this... Unless my opponent's hand suggests I should do something else. Okay, so Ghostly Prism. So I think I just want to take Path to Exile. 
and watery grave. And then I'm just going to get another path to exile and try to figure out what to do with this ghostly prism before my opponent gets a chance to play it. Hopefully my opponent serves in for one here, because then I can like thought scour into two death shadows. Come on, there you go, bud. This is wildly incorrect. Okay, so there's our there's our ghostly prison problem there. So let's just do this now. My opponent's probably like, I've made a mistake. These Thraven specters are like, come and get at these one twos. One twos are overpowered. They're too good. So I'm actually going to looting, I think, because I would like to hit a land to grow my shadows to begin attacking. And I can deal with that grossly prism later. Now I would like to further my own game plan. So we're going to go like this. I can even still just do this after combat if I want, and I probably will just be mana efficient. But now we're just looking at we're looking to get in there, right, Johnny? I could hold up Stubborn Denial, but I kind of just want to be mana efficient and get another body on the board. Because I could, like, like, if they were to path my Death Shadow, it would feel bad right now. But this just, like, I use four mana this turn, which is always, like, great for a Death Shadow deck. Whenever you can actually use all four of your mana, it's always good. There's no reason to snap take Ghostly, right? They're two turns off. So I actually think I can leave this Squadron Hawk. Well, my opponent needs to draw two lands to get the squad to get to Ghostly Prism. I think I'm gonna take the Squadron Hawk. Yeah. Okay, so they're getting there. We can still attack with both of our shadows through. Ghostly Prison, and Squadron Hawk's just going to have infinite chump blockers. Give me one second. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we're on to my turn now. Alright, so now we're going to flash back this looting to start out. And I guess we're going to leave up one of my best hits. Wondering which land I should leave. So I have two lightning bolts left in my deck. I have one, two stubborn denials left in my deck, and I have four discard spells. So I think I should leave up blue black. I think blue blacks been more hits with that one. The correct clue. That's great. I just, that doesn't just kill them. It kills them if they don't block right. 
It definitely kills him next turn. So we're just going to go like this. And I think we're just going to get in there. We're just going to like deal him 10, make it so the Snapcaster is lethal next turn. So they basically have to put three blockers in play. Or they're dead. Yeah, we, we, we're in each other's chat, Johnny, so we'll tend to, like, push people. And we've hosted each other before, right? All right, there we go. Finger this one. Oh, wow, we're already paired. That was the quickest one of the night so far. So I'm going to keep this hand because it's got a counter spell for like an uninteractive deck. And I can end a turn bolt myself and play two Death Shadows if I need to. Which is kind of like, it's not pretty, but it's what we're doing. Streamer Showdown. City of Brass. So this likely means we're playing Ad Nauseam. And then they put the card on the bottom. Wow, this is bold. There's turn one spoils. Like, this could just be game right here. Dredge doesn't play spoils in the vault, though. So what are they named? They named... Lotus Bloom. Okay. So they've got Lotus Bloom suspended. So we're definitely bolting ourselves. So what does my turn look like? I want to be able to stub this. So I think my best play is to play Bloodstained Mire and pass, and I can stub a Pentad Prism, or I can bolt myself if I need to. God, I almost think this is juicy enough to stub on a mold of four. On um, mode 5, I really like harassing cantrips. So I'm actually just going to stub this. Like, I love stubbing cantrips against combo decks. Especially when my mana is going to be so tied up for the next couple turns that maybe it's just the best way to do it is to play slow. Yeah, so now we're just going to go like this. Discard spell. Angel's Grace, Angel's Grace. Okay, so now we're we're in a little bit of trouble. But we're gonna go hit so they have Angel's Grace in hand. We're gonna go like this and pass. Hey, thank you. Thank you there, Jake. I hope the rest of the stream went well for you guys. I appreciate everybody that's coming over. I hope I miss a land drop. So we're definitely bolting ourselves into turn here, and we're looking to draw like a piece of interaction, or we're looking to draw a piece of interaction really bad. Snapcaster Mage would be good. Um, a counter spell or a removal or a discard spell would be good. That's not great, but we are just going to run them out there. The nice thing is that my opponent does need one more mana source in order to kill me. And they're just going to go for it. Like, I, I, I clearly would stubborn denial this if I could. Alright, so I didn't hit a mana source, which is good for the home team. Wow, that was so good. So now I just go like shot shatter discard. That was that was a good one. I 
I guess this is poor sequencing. I should have attacked first. And now they're just going to add Nas. Yeah, that was a great draw there. Yeah, so everybody just came over from uh, Top Deck Productions. I appreciate y'all for showing up. Um, uh, my name is Dylan Hubby. I'm part of the Card Horror Network. I occasionally write for um, Top Deck as well. I put a... So they're just going for it here. Packed. Packed. So I have a pack in hand. Um, I actually put an article up. Today, Jake did about uh, why I think Asian stirring should be banned. So you guys can check that out on the site. So they're just dead, right? Because they're dead to my shadows now. Okay. That was a very fortunate draw for me. So against this deck, I want at least these. I think Ben had a sideboard for this. So let me check this out. I'm playing a Ben Jones Death Shadow deck from GP Barcelona. Barcelona, For people that are wondering. So against Tron and Adnaz, plus the one Disdainful Stroke, plus Summoner Now Rejections, and then two Pyromancers. And they cut all of the removal. Which I can get behind. Well, that's just what Ben brought in. Like, I, I'm just... So, like, I'm literally just... Let me find this. I'm just following Ben Jones's cyborg guide 100% because he built, he built a deck... He built a 75 like this for a reason. I'm actually going to mulligan this hand. Well, my opponent... So, my opponent mulliganed, and I get to discard spell them on one. I have a snap cast animation, snap dispel... Dispel? Discard? So we can actually kind of set up to play a slow game or play a long game. It's really hard for me to give up discarding an opponent, spelling opponent after they mulligan. So I think we're going to keep this. This is a, on the lower end of keeps. Yeah, like th this is where we're getting the list from today. Right here from Ben. And then Ben also posted a sideboard guide, which I've got up in another window. So Temple of the Seed, they put a card on the bottom. We drew Death Shadow, which is a decent draw. The best draw for us, honestly, would be Thought Scour at this point. My opponent's got nothing going on but Temples. Okay, we're going, we're getting there. I probably should have mulliganed because if I go to Snapcaster Thoughtseize, that puts me further away from Gurmag Angler. So yeah, that was probably, that was likely a mistake from, from me to do it like this. I definitely, sh I definitely should have mulliganed. All right, Stubbs a decent draw, but... It's not what we need. I should have mulliganed, for sure. Hindsight, this is a mistake. Well, the hand was not synergistic. It's not like it, it had decent interaction, but like these two battle rages weren't good. So I'm already on a mulligan to six. And the Snapcaster Mage and the uh, Gurmag Anglers kind of fight a little bit. So I probably should have mulliganed on that, on that premise. So I think... I kind of just want to flash this Snapcaster in. I feel like do something. I, flashing the Snapcaster made him feel so mopey, though. That's pretty mopey, too. So now I'm going to ditch a Battle Rage. At least now I have an answer to um, whatever the card is. Uh, ad nauseum itself.
what do we got here? Leyline of Sanctity. All right, we're going to let that go. And because of that, we're going to put Snapcaster Mage in the end of the turn. We're just on, like, counter spells and removal at this point. Counter spells and I'm sorry, ways to accelerate my Gurmag Angler. Which basic swamp was none of those. So now we know my opponent has the top deck to get it. Production on life. Alright, so we're gonna sell in for a long one here. Okay, looting's great. Looting's gonna let us I again miss sequenced. Ditch this, ditch this. And I can only hold up one counter spell anyways. So we're just gonna have that be stubborn denial. And we're going to leave the looting in the graveyard. So now we're in pretty good shape here. I also like speculatively kept my hand because Ben has six ways to fuel the graveyard after sideboard. Or in the main deck. So like it's likely this Gurmag Angler is going to turn on eventually. Dodge, dip, dive, duck, dodge. All right. I kind of want to flash back this looting. That also seems loose. I think we're just going to sit here behind two counter spells for the rest of the game. I can even battle rage my angler to cut down on the clock. Because if I battle range Angler, then it still makes it a two turn clock. You can't lose the game from zero less all damage source to be infect. So if I battle rage Angler, five nine, then I need 10 more infect. And I just don't reliably have a way to get 10 more infect on the on the field, on the battlefield. I think we're just gonna keep pecking in here. I can battle rage now to just save myself. It's still three turns no matter how I cut it, right? No, I actually No, I'll just battle rage on my last turn. On the third turn. Um, we're gonna let that go. Lightning bolt here would be be decent. They put two cards on the bottom with that. All right, so we can't even kick. We have too many counter spells. Now I wish I would counter that Serum Visions. So now we got him on our next turn through Double Stubborn Denial. But Angel's Grace kind of doesn't really care about Stubborn Denial. One time. You are right, Teddy. Real news. Okay. That was a pretty poor draw from myself and from my opponent, which is a little unfortunate, but look at this, playing for the 4 1. This will be my second 4 1 in a row. Third and fourth leagues. Third and four leagues. 
Oh, you can't end just very soon below zero. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm a bit I'm a bit tired, so I'm missing a couple things. It was a little late, but I just wanted I wanted to get a stream in because it was gonna be a little tough to get one in this week. Between my dog getting sick again, which is just so sad. It just kills me. He ended up he went swimming this weekend and he picked up an infection. Which sucked. Um God. I hate keeping hands like this, but you gotta. This is where you lose a little bit of um value in the way that Ben's deck is made, I think. Because like you easily could draw like Sierra Visions would help smooth this hand out a lot, and we just don't have that. I can keep this hand because I'm on the play and I can get away with it, but this is definitely where I would want Serum Visions because, like, I only have one cantrip that can, I have only three cantrips that can reliably dig as opposed to the version that I've been playing where now if I can hit any six of my cantrips, they're very good at finding what I need. Yeah, I don't blame me for it. I can, I can, I can definitely see it being right to mold this hand. I would not blame anybody for doing that. Looking for some action on one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So I bolt my opponent or stub something. I can play angler next turn. Okay. So I've got to deal with this. As bad as taking this much damage is, it's going to let me get my angler into play next turn. And I don't take anything from that swift spear. And now it's just four tacks with a bolt and a stub backup. I'm going to need more to win this, Matt. I'm going to need some more backup, but. <laughs> I love you, Johnny. Okay, so we're just going to bolt this. And I think I'm going to shock myself to do it. I would like to be able to stub. I'm going to guess my opponent doesn't have a one mana burn spell because I think they would have attacked if they did. Because they would have offered the trade to get the angler out of there. Yeah. Now here's the million dollar question here. Do I dismember this thing? If so, how much life do I pay? Anyway, two life go to eight. And then I don't think they have a, they can go double bolt my Gurmag Angler. But then they have two cards in their hand. And if my opponent attacks, I want to see what is on top of my deck. If they don't attack, I think I'm just going to untap and then use my Blood Crypt and my Swamp to dismember this. Because like worst case scenario here, scenario, is that I lose my Gurmag Angler. Okay, so they didn't do this. So now I'm just going to untap. Because I don't want to go bolt, bolt, kill my angler. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think I can cast this thought seize. Might be able to cast it next turn, I'm not sure. But I don't think I can cast on this turn because I have to shock myself to do it. But I'm definitely going to play my tap land. I would just like more mana. I would like to... Well, I guess, is there any reason to play my tap land? It's literally just... There's no reason to play it, right? Yeah, I guess we're just going to hold it. We could, we could loot it away. Three damage. Supposed to be to five, and they're drawing to four cards. So they need two burn spells to kill me. Two out of four. If I let this resolve, they'll need three burn spells to kill me. And if they fetch, they're dead. I think I let this one go. Because if I let this go, and they need, they still need two burn spells. They need three burn spells to kill me, like bolt, bolt, bolt. And I stub one of them. If I let, if I stub this, then my opponent can go land. I really don't want them to get lightning helix, because lightning helix could work towards like if I can't draw, if I draw snap casting rage, I can snap bolt them. You're saying if I, but if I don't stub it, I really don't want him to kill my Gurmag. <sighs> four cards. They, if I stub this, they would need three out of four to be perfect. If I let this go, they can have creature. <sighs> I'm just gonna stub it. I'll go. I'll go with. I think. I think it makes sense, Teddy. I think. They need to have they they have to have it all rolled up. And my opponent has not played this game like they've had it rolled up, but this gives them the opportunity to kill my Gurmag Angler, which they kill my Gurmag Angler. So what do we got? You got it there, sir. One, two, three. I don't know. They didn't have it. All right. Now we just like knock the top here. Okay. So now we just attack and then snap bolt them. Because they would have just killed me if they had anything. Their hand must just be like mono Eidolons. Got him. Okay, so we need to burn. I want. What, what did Ben do? So. He gets burn minus two dismembers. Plus a stub, plus a fatal push. Keeps all four wraiths. Doesn't even bring in the pyromancers or a lava man. That's all right. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Ben's. We're gonna do what Ben does. I would like to think I would change something there, but that's what he does. So I'm gonna look at one. I think his hand's a keep because we're gonna see a lot of new cards here. 
and Stubborn Denial is great. We can see this, we can discard on one, or we can see a lot of new cards and fill our angler. So I think this is a keep. I think this is better than a random six. Pretty low, pretty loose to like a um, like a goblin guide. I'm pretty sure it lo loose to goblin guide. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's what he did. So I'm just I'm just I'm literally just doing what Ben's sideboard was. So I'm gonna hold this and we're just gonna interact on two. These matches tend to slow down a lot after sideboard. So like we're not gonna get burned out quite as quickly. That might be right to do. Ooh, so this is just nine points right here. Jesus. But it's not nine, it's seven, excuse me. So my opponent ditched the air and made so we know their hand. Okay, so now this has to go get this path to exile is gonna mess with me a lot. So I can go fetch shock nine. I think I've got to go Looting Inquisition on this turn. Like, I do have to set set up a creature. So let's loot first. Okay, so there's Angler for next turn. So let's take rid of Thoughtseize. Let's get rid of Thoughtseize. Let's Inquisition this pass. And then we're going to take two more. Hopefully that's all we take. And then we can take Gurmag Angler. We can play Gurmag Angler and have Stubborn Denial up. Moto's tweaking out here. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. I hope everything's still coming through here. Moto's on the struggle train. I hope that hasn't come over into my computer. Which happens from time to time. Looks like it has. Oh, we're good. Okay, so now we need them to miss. And then we're going to play Angler with Stub back up. We should be in good shape. My opponent doesn't have a draw that kills me here, but they, they have a draw that like means like their next draws kill me. But yeah, like that puts me at one. That was like the worst one. So now you need to draw Lightning Bolt. Yeah, we're just dead now. Yep, that was tough. Okay. Let's jump back into it. We're on the play. So that's good. I would like to play first. No, I'm, I'm gonna go with what Ben Ben did. Like Ben Ben made the deck for a reason. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it up. So I think we're gonna go Island, Swamp, Gurmag Angler. We're gonna get to this Death Shadow. No matter what here. This is pretty good. Like we can, we can play a Gurmag Angler at 18. Nothing from them on one. Holy shnikes.
All right, I'm actually going to check my top card out here. Thought Scourers. I don't want that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can just delve my whole graveyard and then bluff stub and try to thought try to street wraith into stub if I uh, if I need to. Wow. So this game's over. Yeah, so the the sideboard, the deck that I'm using, you can find it right here. Give Ben a follow too. Ben's a GP winner from Europe. He's a very good Magic player. Um. Okay, so you should be able to find what you need from there. Now this is sweet. I can't play Death Shadow next turn, which is slightly annoying. Now I can play Death Shadow. So I might just jam Death Shadow this turn. I'm probably going to. Because I'm just going to put my opponent in such a squeeze. Yeah, now especially that I drew the Snapcaster Mage. So now we're going to go get probably blue-red. And then just cast the Shadow. And now with Stub, Snap, Stub, it's going to be pretty tough for my opponent to win this game. And if my opponent wants to bolt this Death Shadow, then I'm just going to let that go. What are we doing? Boros Charm me. Okay, that one's good. Um, I wanted my red source. So now I can just shock myself. My opponent's still not dead. So if I shock myself and attack, then my opponent goes to 13, and then I still I have stub, snap, stub. So I'm dead to two burn spells. I think having snap, stub, stub, snap, snap, stub, snap is worth it. I might have played myself out of this game here by being a little aggressive. The opponent goes to two. Yeah. Yep. A block. A block? Yeah. I, I might have cast this this looting here. You need a block. What do you mean? Okay. Yeah, I want to give myself an option to cast this looting, but it turns out we're probably not going to need it. Stub that. Okay, that resolves. So I probably can actually kill me with this stub on the stack. Okay, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Well, it's nothing more than going to six does, right? Yeah, I think I played myself out of this. So they can only fet crack one of those fetch lands. 
And if my opponent had another stubborn denial, they would have used it. So. They had a one mana one a one mana burn spell. They would have done it at the end of my turn unless they have lava spike. All right, there we go. Nice. Yeah, going to five doesn't leave us any more dead than going to six does, right, Teddy? All right, let's jump back in for another league. <laughs> 